How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be taking you through getters and setters in JavaScript. So the first question is what exactly is a getter and a setter? Well, they relate to defining custom logic when it comes to accessing data on an object or setting some data on an object. So this right here is going to be much easier to explain using an example. So right here, I've got this object called person containing a few properties about a person okay uh, we have a name job and a couple of their interests so let's first take a look at getters by defining a new getter on this object here to retrieve a person's headline so a person's headline in this case here is simply going to be a string of text uh, describing the person uh, their name job and their primary interest okay so down here using a comma let's define a new getter by saying get then put a space and call this one headline now we can use open curly brackets here and drop down in curly braces and basically this right here is your syntax for a getter. You say get, then the name of the getter, and whatever gets uh, basically returned from this function here, that's gonna be what is given to you when you try to access person.headline. So you can think of this like a function. If I was to return uh, decode as an example here, then I drop down and I say console.log person.headline, just like that. We're gonna access this getter, and now this function is gonna run. The return value is gonna be what I get when I call the getter. Let's console.log this, I'll run the code and we get decode right down there. So we can see how the getter works. Now, the most important part of a getter here is gonna be the ability to access data on the object because remember, these getters are defined on the object itself. So it, it means you basically, you don't need to go away to a different part of the code to add some logic. You can do it all inside the object itself using a getter. As an example, to get this person's headline, we can say JavaScript template strings using the back ticks near the one on your keyboard, then say dollar sign curly brace this dot name, then say is a, then say this dot job, and is mainly interested in, then just say here this dot interest at index zero and a full stop. So we're getting the person's name, their job, and their primary interest, which is simply just the first item in the interests array. If I console.log person.headline, we get Dom is a web developer and is mainly interested in tennis. Now, I may wish to remove the colon right here and just try it again. And of course, we get the same thing without the colon. So this right here is gonna be the headline. So we can see how powerful this getter is because you're able to take the data on an object and then convert it into something else meaningful for your application. Think about the idea of using dot headline to show this text when the page first loads up or something like that. Maybe a user profile, okay? So that's the power of getters. Now, we can now take a look at setters, all right? So we've seen getter, let's look at setters now. So I wanna create a setter on this object to define their primary interest, okay? So let's hop down here and we're gonna say set, then say primary interest, just like that. Now, the syntax is very similar to a getter, but this one here is going to take in an argument. We can call this one val. You guys can call this whatever you like. As an example, you may wish to call it interest instead, but I'm gonna call it val. So now we can define some custom logic, which happens when I try to set primary interest on the person object. We can say, as an example, this dot interests dot, and because the primary interest, okay, is the first item in the array here, we can say interests dot unshift. So the unshift method on arrays is going to insert a new item at the beginning of the array. And we can say val just like that. 
So now if I was to set the primary interest, it's gonna insert a new item in the first index of the interests array, just like that. And now of course, the, um, the headline getter is gonna update to instead display that value. Let's also place a console.log down here, which says uh, setting primary interest, just to uh, keep track of what the application or the, um, or the script is doing. Then we can drop down here and we can say person.primary interest equal to, then say home automation. So now this function is gonna run. I've assigned the setter. The right side here is gonna be inserted as my first argument and it's gonna set that as the primary interest. I can now log out the headline again. I can drop down here, run the code and we get tennis initially, then we get home automation. So we can see there we've successfully modified the array using the setter, okay? Now, you guys can put whatever code you want inside the getter or the setter. You can put if statements, you can put switch statements, whatever JavaScript code you want, you can put inside these functions. Now, we've set the primary interest. Let's now define a getter for the same thing and use that right up here. We can say get primary interest just like that and we can return this.interests at index zero. Let's now use primary interest in the headline just like that. I'll save this, I'll run the code again and we get the exact same result tennis and home automation. So once again you can see the power of both the getter and the setter. Okay. Now, when it comes to the usage in your own applications, like I mentioned to you earlier, you can use things like the headline to uh, show this for a user's profile, okay? But there are many things that you may find a good use for these getters and setters. Um, so, you know, if you can't think of anything right now, it's still good to learn this, so that way when the, when the uh, opportunity does come up, you can of course use it, okay? So I've taken a look or I've shown you guys how it works on objects, okay? I now wanna show you how you can use it on classes because you're gonna definitely see examples of getters and setters on classes as well. Of course, a class is simply just, or an instance of a class is also an object. So they're gonna work in a very similar fashion, but I wanna show you guys anyway, alongside uh, another example of how you can use getters and setters. So. Let's just get rid of all this code right here and define a new class called person. If you're not too sure how JavaScript classes work, I've got a whole video dedicated to that and I'll leave it in the top right corner of this video. So a class called person is gonna have a constructor. It's gonna take in a name. When the person gets created, we're gonna say this.name equal to name just like that. I can now drop down below and I'm gonna say const uh, dom equal to a new instance of person and pass in there my name. I can now say console.log person.name just like that. I can run the code and we can see here, of course, we get that. Okay, let's just make this dom.name instead and we can try it again and we get dom right there. So. Pretty straightforward, we're simply getting the name property from the class instance and of course we get DOM. So let's define some custom logic on the setting and getting of the name property. So you're gonna see this sometimes in code examples online. So let me show you right now. What happens is people will sometimes um, store the raw value of a property with an underscore, okay? Let me show you the getter and setter example and then sort of talk you guys through it. It's gonna be much easier to explain like that. So if I drop down here, I'm gonna say set name and take in a value. So this function is gonna run whenever we attempt to set name, including at the top right here. So when you set name, we're gonna say this dot underscore name equal to value. So right here, this might look confusing, but basically this underscore name is the only real property 
on this class. The setter is simply just a decoration around setting this property here. So you can put your own logic around it. You can say if the value dot length is more than 40 characters, then you can like throw an error or trim the name, things like that. So you can implement your own custom logic or checks around setting the name, okay? And then when it comes to getting the name, we can say get just like that. And we can return this dot underscore name. Because once again, just like the setup, this getter here is like a decoration around this real underscore name property. So this is all we need to implement a setter and a getter for the name property. This code here or this code here does not need to change. We're gonna get the exact same result. Let's run this code and we get DOM. So now, rather than this.name setting the property directly, it's now going through a setter and it's actually setting underscore name instead. Hope that makes sense, but the power behind this is the ability to, like I said earlier, you can add checks or validation, or in the getter, you can manipulate the data. As an example, you can say this.name dot, then say to uppercase, just like that, to uppercase the name when you try and retrieve it. Let's go down here and we get uppercase DOM instead. So you might see this example right here online, but the point is I wanted to also show you how you can use setters and getters on a class. So hope that makes sense. If you've got any questions about getters or setters, leave them in the comment section down below and I'll try my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.